At some point in your life, probably much sooner rather than later if you're currently taking my survey research methods class, you will be conducting empirical research. That means that you will be taking what you have learned and now know in theory and applying it. So let's take a few minutes to refresh your memory, specifically about the purposes of research and the concept of scientific empiricism. Starting with, what is the purpose of research? We use research to both acquire new knowledge about behavior and to evaluate the knowledge that others claim to have found. When your purpose is to acquire new knowledge, you produce that knowledge. You are a researcher. But many times your job is to review and evaluate the research or the knowledge that others have produced, in which case you are consuming that knowledge. And based upon what you know about research, you will accept or reject the researcher's conclusions. In this case, you are a practitioner. Regardless of the purpose and the role you play, you are interested in knowing about communication behavior. You are interested in knowledge. But let's go back to the very beginning, how we gain knowledge, specifically the theory of empiricism. This philosophy, credited to John Locke, states that we don't know things innately or intuitively. Our knowledge doesn't just come to us out of the blue, and we shouldn't just blindly trust what others tell us. Instead, knowledge comes either solely or primarily from sensory experience. We see, hear, touch, taste, and smell to gain knowledge. In fact, the term empiricism comes from the Greek word for experience. Related to science, the emphasis is on the role of experience and observation. If we have experienced or have directly observed something, we have evidence that helps us know something. Thus, think of evidence as the center of the philosophy of scientific empiricism. We can't know anything without evidence. Another way of looking at it, evidence is the root of knowledge. Empirical evidence, then, is information that has been gathered that can be used to justify a belief, to accept or reject a claim. It is the base of the scientific method, which, through the use of experiments and validated measurement tools, is used to conduct empirical research. This leads us to the six steps of scientific empiricism. First, you learn what is already out there. Then you will generate a guess about what you might find if you research the topic. These guesses would be hypotheses. For our purposes, we will broaden the term hypothesis to include research questions and study objectives. Next, determine how you will be able to assess if your guess, your hypothesis, is correct. What would be considered by others to be appropriate evidence? And then you must gather or collect the data to provide that evidence. Once you have that data or the evidence, you'll need to evaluate it so that you can compare it against or test the hypotheses. And finally, you'll need to be able to defend your research and the entire research process. Here's a shorthand version of the six steps. You'll discover what is out there conducting a literature review, hypothesize or guess what the results would be, and evidence is about what would be accepted evidence supporting the hypothesis, collecting data in a systematic, objective, and controlled manner, and then evaluating that data where you're analyzing the data to test the hypothesis. Finally, you need to defend or be able to defend your results. Let's run through these steps again using a topic that many of us are familiar with, Disneyland. In May of 2011, Che Wei Su completed a master's thesis at CSU Long Beach on the motivations of people who visit Disneyland in Anaheim, California. You can find the entire study through ProQuest. Let's flip through Su's thesis to see the six steps of scientific empiricism in a master's thesis. The first step you'll remember is to discover what is out there, and this thesis conducted a full literature review spanning 34 pages. Sue looked at a multitude of topic areas, including general research on motivation and then a particular research tool, the Leisure Motivation Scale. Sue came up with two overarching research questions relating to the hypothesized step. The first related to the motivations of people who visit Disneyland, while the second addressed the differences that might be related to demographic variables. The third step is to determine what would be acceptable or appropriate evidence to answer these research questions, and Chapter 3 was devoted to explaining what type of evidence would be collected as well as how it would be collected. 
If you spend time actually reading this thesis, you'll notice that Sue thinks ahead to the last step of defending the results by preempting potential objections about the study population, which was heavily composed of foreign visitors, specifically Chinese. This section also describes the design of the research instrument and the procedures for actually collecting the data, which is the fourth step in scientific empiricism, actually conducting the research. Then Sue had to analyze and evaluate the data collected, conducting in this case means analyses to compare against the first research question relating to the motivations of people who visit Disneyland. Then Sue could answer the question and attempt to explain and interpret the results. The last step is to be able to defend on the basis of the quality of data and the appropriateness of their evaluation. As noted previously throughout the thesis, Sue noted areas of concern, such as the high proportion of foreign-born Chinese in the study population that throws into question the generalizability of the study's results. Notice that a significant portion of the last chapter focuses on the limitations of the study, as well as recommendations for future studies. Once the study is completed, the oral defense presentation usually occurs, in which the study's authors must justify their research and answer questions related to the study, defending the research. And the necessity to defend research is not limited to a master's thesis. In both the academic and the corporate world, researchers often must formally explain and defend their results. Let's compare the six steps in scientific empiricism to the research you will be conducting in this course. The first step is to discover what is out there. To use an old cliche, there is no reason to reinvent the wheel. Conduct a literature review to determine what others have already done on your topic. Even if you are researching something that you think is completely unique, it helps to know that. But it is very likely that others have at least touched on your topic. What research has already been done? And is it good research? Is it limited in scope? What can you learn from others that you might be able to replicate? or avoid in your research. Perhaps there are some good survey questions out there that you can use as a base for your questionnaire. Then you hypothesize. This relates to what the research is really about. What do you really want to know? Identify some research hypotheses, questions, or objectives that your research might be able to support or answer. Remember that the third step, evidence, relates to determining what evidence would be accepted as supporting the hypothesis. This really relates to how the study is designed, including who you interview, the research method, what questions you ask them, what types of analyses you will be conducting, etc. Think ahead to how others might attack your research and try to design the study to reduce or deflect those attacks. Now you must follow the study design to collect the data that you plan to use as evidence. This is the research fieldwork, where you gather the data. In survey research, you will likely be conducting interviews via telephone, face-to-face, -face, or online. Then the statistical analysis comes into play, and you will analyze the data you gathered, converting the data to frequency counts and percentages, how many people said what, means or averages, etc. This gets compared to the research hypotheses you generated in Step 2 to support or reject your guesses, or to answer your research questions. In our class, you'll likely be using SPSS to conduct your statistical analysis and preparing a report to explain your results. The last step is to defend your results. You will likely be asked questions about why you designed your research, how it was implemented, how you gathered your data, and what statistical tests you used to analyze that data. If you've done a good job in the third step, identifying what would be appropriate evidence, and in the fourth step, you collected data in a systematic, objective, and controlled manner, then this step will be much easier. The steps are probably easy to understand, but may be difficult for you to remember. One of my classes came up with this mnemonic device to help them remember it. Does he eat candy every day? The D in does stands for discover. H stands for hypothesize. E stands for evidence. And remember that this is determining what evidence would be considered appropriate to support the hypotheses, not the gathering of evidence, which would happen in the next step, which is C for collect data or collect the evidence. E is evaluating or analyzing the evidence collected. And then finally, D for defending study results. Processing time. What are the two purposes of research? What is the core or root of scientific empiricism? 
and what are the six steps in order of scientific empiricism. Before we conclude, let me leave you with a caveat by Max Shelley, political science professor at Iowa State University. Knowledge is tentative and probabilistic, subject to continued revision and falsification. In other words, it is very hard to be certain about what you know, because what is considered valid evidence today may be revised or even thrown out in the future. Remember that in the second century, the evidence pointed to the world being flat until new evidence emerged. It is important to keep an open mind and continually research to gather the best evidence possible.